Hey there, and welcome to ProFlows Plus. I'm Cameron, and today we're talking about lights and shadows in 3D space in After Effects, and what does that mean? Okay, so what can you do with lights and shadows inside of After Effects? Well, the biggest thing is, is that you can add a whole lot of depth to your 3D scene files. So we've already looked at how to create depth without light and shadows by just layering elements back in 3D space, but I wanna show you, you can take that a step further in this series of lessons. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, actually let's go to two views just so you can see what's going on here. So here's our 3D scene. I've got a circle here that's filled with pink right here, and I've got a solid layer right here, which is just a blue solid. So I could use two shape layers if I wanted to, uh, two solids with a mask for a circle if I wanted to. I just happen to use a shape layer and a solid for my own personal reasons. I don't know why, but here we go. What we're going to do now is we are going to, um, let's bring this circle forward in Z space. So just to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So here we are, the circles forward in Z space. If I hit C for my camera tool, you can see I'm rotating around. You can see that there's some definite depth here going on, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add light, right? So we're gonna add some depth to this. So let's go to layer, new, light. And there's different types of lights. There's ambient, there's point, there's spot, and there's parallel. So I'm gonna show you how each of these works. So we've got point, that's my favorite type of light to start with. Um, I just, I generally go with a point light. Um, color doesn't matter. You can go 100% white if you want. You can go a little bit off-white if you want. Uh, you can go a color if you want to, but we'll do a little bit off-white. Fall off, I'll show you here in just a minute. And we do want it to cast shadow so we can see uh, immediately what's going on here. So uh, shadow darkness, 100% shadow diffusion, sure. Click OK. It's adding the light right here, and it's adding, it's figuring out, it's calculating uh, what's going on over here. And it's taking a while because I've got it set to Cinema 4D up here in my renderer, which I need to, need to change back to Classic. So we're not gonna deal with Cinema 4D renders. We just wanna be on Classic renders. So I clicked on Renderer here to change my renderer back to Classic 3D. If yours, yours probably defaults to Classic 3D, mine just happened to jump into Cinema 4D because I think I was working on a project previously where that was happening. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our light here and I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard to go back to my tool, my move tool, and I'm just going to bring this light out like so. I'm, I'm pulling it back in Z space and I could I could move it over here if I wanted to as well. Um, sometimes it's just easier to work. Um, a lot of times I work with one view, but uh, I just wanted you to see what was going on here. Now, my scrolling out with my, my magic mouse, you can see that the light's sitting out here. If I move the, the light left, you're gonna see that the shadow is projecting over here. If I move it up, it's going to, the shadow's gonna be down. If I move the light down, the shadow's gonna go up. You see how it reacts. Um, if I move closer in, it's gonna make the shadow you know, tighter to the background. Like It's actually a bigger shadow because the light's closer to the object. Um, but that's just a, a general idea of how shadows work. I'm gonna go back to one view now. Um, I can open up this light here, light options. I can change the intensity at any time. So this is 100%, which a lot of times is where I start. Um, if I crank it way up, you know, past 100%, it starts to really blow things out here. I can also go negative or you know, below 100. So it's pretty dark there. You can actually also go negative uh, percentage to take away light. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, I can change the color, like I said, so we could go, you know, something maybe in the green range, just to show you, for example. So now our blue background is now lit greenly, right? So I'm gonna undo that command Z to undo that. Um, we've got things like our shadow darkness, uh, which is 100%. Uh, we can go beyond 100%. If you're working at 32 bits, maybe you wanna do that. I don't ever really find myself going below, beyond 100% for, for blacks, but I can also reduce the darkness. So, you know, something like 42%. So it's just it's a, a much softer, uh, not as 
intense black shadow, right? Now, if I go back to 100% here and then I turn the diffusion down, let's say all the way down to zero pixels, now you can see we have a very harsh shadow here, right? And again, I can turn down the darkness to like 42% or I can turn it you know, up past 100. I can go way up in the diffusion, you know, like here we're up in 300, 474 pixels. So it's a very, very soft shadow, right? So let's go back to zero pixels and let's move the light around here so you can just kind of get an idea of what's going on again. Pretty cool stuff. You can see here how it, you know, really creates some interesting depth and dimension by adding a light with a shadow. Um, what else can we do here? We can also talk about things like uh, the fall off. Okay, so there's none, that's the default. There's also smooth, inverse square clamped. I'm not gonna get into the scientifics behind these. Uh, they just produce inverse square clamped, I believe is a more true to life type light um, based on the algorithms that are in the shadows. Uh, smooth, oh, the, the algorithms that are in the light itself. Smooth, um, so there's smooth, right? So it, it defaults to, for me, 500 radius, 500 fall off distance. Those are the two values you have to, to work with. Uh, inverse square clamped, change that. It's, you know, you can see it a little bit here with the same values. So what I'll do is I'll just, um, essentially what you have is you have a, a fall off and a fall off, a radius and a fall off distance. So again, I'm not gonna get into scientifics about these. Um, I like to typically work with smooth and I play around with things like the radius here. So you can see the radius is just like, it's, it's like a, a soft um, sphere of light here. So it's hitting here, the fall off distance um, is kind of like the, the um, smoothness or the, the feather, I'm sorry, the feather of that. So if I crank the value up, see this is starting to look kind of nice. Just by playing around with these values here. I don't know how well you can see this. It's slightly banding here, but it's it's a nice, it's a nice look. Uh, inverse square completely lights it up. So there you go. That's how the point light works. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fall off off. And I want to show you the other types of lights. So open up light settings again. And that was layer light settings. Let's change it from point to spot. That's another popular mode to work in. And it looks slightly different than the point light. We'll go back to 100%. Uh, I should mention that, uh, where is it at? Actually, never mind. It's not popping up there. Sometimes you're going to get an option here for changing your light from spot to point, things like that. Um, so for whatever reasons, I'm not seeing it now. But here's spot. Again, here's point, we're back to point. So there's point, so there's no really fall off on the edges here, but if I un command Z undo this and bring the spot back in, you're gonna see a little bit more feathering here on the edges. And you can see there's a cone here, right? We've got a cone all of a sudden. So um, let's play around with that cone. So we can take it down, like we're taking the cone angle in, and you can see it's creating a very small cone of light uh, with a lot of feathering on the edges here. We can bring that cone, well, let's bring it down like that. So right now we're at cone feather of 100%. We could take it down to 0% and have a very hard edged again, uh, which, you know, might be kind of interesting for like a spotlight. It's like a true spotlight. It can come in and, uh, you know, if we animated this, maybe like here's the point of interest. I should mention that as well. Uh, uh, spotlight has a point of interest and a position. A point light has no point of interest. And I'm not a fan typically of points of interest, which is why I use things like one node cameras. The two node camera has the point of interest. It's just extra keyframes for me to deal with. I like to keep things things simple. So um, typically I like to use point lights if I can. Sometimes you have to use a spot um, and I have to deal with you know a second parameter here. But right now I'm just moving the point of interest around. So we, you know, we could easily animate this. Uh, we could probably take the feather back up to 100%, you know, play around like this. Again, there's there's um, settings for the uh, fall off. 
smooth and inverse clamped again. Shadow darkness. Same type of settings that were in the um, point light. Diffusion, all that good stuff. So that's spotlight. Um, let's show you the other light settings, which let's start with ambient. So I'm gonna create a second light here. And the second light, we're gonna change it to ambient. And you can see ambient has no fall off, no shadows. And that's because ambient does exactly what it says. It just creates like an ambient overall light. So if I hit AA on my keyboard, it pulls up the light options here. And there's just two options. There's intensity and there's color. So typically with an ambient light, I like to just bring um, ambience in to be a very subtle fill type light, just to bring some, some life to everything else if it's too dark. So this is with the ambient light on and that's off, right? So that's just with our spotlight. That's with the ambient light on. So we could actually maybe crank this one up just a little bit. So again, no ambient light, ambient light. Pretty nice. Let's turn both of these back off. Again, you can see with no lights here, even though we are in three, we've got three dimensional layers here, there's no true depth to it, right? So that's what's awesome about 3D lights and shadows. But let's do the fourth light, which is a parallel light. Um, I rarely use a parallel light. So these have fall offs, they have cast shadows, intensity. My understanding, a parallel light to me is like, it's like sunlight or an infinite light. It's a light that just sits out there um, with a um, one directional, just a bright light um, like we see here. Um, you pretty much, I mean, there's they're a very simple type of light Maybe I should try and use them a little bit more. I just, I don't. And there's some tiny little arrows here showing you that the light's just pointing that way. Um, again, you can play with the shadow darkness, um, but there is no actual um, shadow diffusion with this light. It's just like more harsh type of light. So you can create some interesting um, lighting effects with these. Let's leave this guy on. Let's actually crank up the value. So there, there's our parallel light. Now with our spotlight, let's turn the spotlight back on. And a lot of times when you start combining lights, um, it's very easy to over to blow out your scene. So if you have two or three spotlights and they're all 100% uh, values, you're going to start seeing really hot spots and you don't want that. It's just going to look like bad lighting. Um, but what I want to show you here is if I take the intensity down, to a negative value, you can see it actually starts subtracting light from the area where the spotlight's hitting, right? So it's kind of a weird effect here, but if for whatever reason I wanted this part of the, the image to be dark, I can use a negative value here. So we'll go back to zero. Zero is parallel light only. Spotlight goes negative intensity and it starts to subtract, pull light away from this part of the scene. So there you go. That I think is all I wanted to show you with the basics of how 3D lights and shadows work. Let's move on to some more interesting examples.